Sanders and Kathleen Hepburn. to be uh, screening our film in Los Angeles at this historic theater. Um, and uh, this film was made with, with nothing but, but love and heart um, and uh, the desire to um, honor the strength of indigenous women. Uh, it's, it's inspired by an experience that I had a number of years ago in the same neighborhood that the film is, is shot in, so it's very much rooted in, in a real experience. Um, and so we're, we're really hoping that audiences here are able to connect with that. Um, and uh, we wanted to especially thank our incredible cast and crew who worked so hard to, to make this extremely technically challenging feat um, happen. Um, and also thank our, our Canadian producers, Lori Lizinski and, and Tyler Hagen, and our wonderful star, Violet Nelson, who's here tonight. Um, yeah. You, you can say stuff now. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just so we're we're stoked to be here, and, and thank you everyone for coming out. Um, we just wanted to thank our American partners. We had some really great support uh, from the US of A. Um, particularly, we want to thank Array Releasing um, for for bringing the film here, um, and the Sundance Institute who supported the film, and the Lag Relaying group, um, and Bird Running Water, of course, who was such a great support for us, um, and the Women in Film LA. So thank you everyone for, for being here, and, and um, we hope you enjoy the film, and we'll be here for a Q&A. Thank you. So please help me in welcoming back writer directors Ed Maya Feathers, Kathleen Hepburn, and Violet Nelson. It's, it's hard to know where to begin. Um, uh, you, you, you talked a little bit about the origin of the story and you did very personal thoughts. Um, everything here from camera to performance, um, editing sound is just working in absolute harmony um, to to convey an emotional truth that these people are going through. Um, can you, can you, was this something that was workshopped? Um, it doesn't seem like, maybe I'm wrong, but it, the traditional kind of script writing process wasn't, was that how it was done, or was it something that was workshopped more organically, and the dialogue came out of these, that process? Um, yeah, so the, the film is inspired by this actual event that happened, uh, but we fictionalized both of the characters and, and the story itself. Um, but we wanted to um, absolutely keep the film rooted in, in realism. Um, and both Kathleen and I um, have, you know, we haven't experienced the foster care system, um, nor have either of us been in an abusive relationship. And so um, we thought it was, uh, well, film has such a, a long history of, of being an extractive process in terms of um, drawing from marginalized communities, taking stories, putting them on screen, and then not actually meaningfully engaging or giving back to community in any way. Um, and we wanted this to not be that in, in any way, shape, or form. And so early on, we workshopped the script with um, a group of young Indigenous women who um, had very close lived experience to that of, of Rosie. Um, and um, yeah, we spent a lot of time with the with the script, and we also rehearsed for for four weeks um, with with Violet. Um, we were inspired by the process of theater and, and having the ability to to work through the script um, during that time and, and and workshop every beat of the script and, and find um, sort of the, the natural organic flow of, of the of the script. Um, and that rehearsal process also had to do with our decision to shoot it in real time and one continuous take, um, 16 millimeter, having all the choreographed um, camera transitions. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm still I'm still in the glow of the film right now. So, um, uh, can you talk a little bit about? Uh, you know, is this your first time acting? Is this what is your experience with with acting, and, and where are you taking it? 
Like, where are, are you? Are you? How did you? How did you guys find each other? And what was your experience acting? And do you want to go further with it outside of this? Um, there was a, an open casting call, and my friend messaged me about the the audition, and uh, she told me to tell other girls about it, other indigenous girls about it, and she said, "If you want to go for it as well, you can." And I was like, no, I'll just tell other girls about it. <laughs> and um, then I told my mom about this. And then she's like, well, why not? And I was like, um, acting is not my thing. She's like, well, how do you know? I was like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's like, well, it's either a yes or no that you're going to get. So I might as well just go for it. And she wouldn't leave me alone about it. So I said, like, OK, fine. <laughs> and then um, uh, as I was reading like, the script and all that, uh, and realizing that this could really help other indigenous women and just women in general um, know that they're not alone and that there are people going through what they're going through or similar things that they're going through and to let them know that they're not alone and that they can talk to people about um, this violence and that they're going through. Very good. Um, are there any are there any questions or from you guys? Are you still yes. I just had a technical question. Um, the, the whole film felt really seamless to me, and I think I only noticed a few cuts. And I I, I, I also noticed that you don't want to bring attention to that, but it does feel like. I only noticed maybe three cuts the entire film. So how many shots was it? Um, well, there's the, the prologue scenes at the beginning, um, and those are more conventionally edited, I guess. There's several cuts in there. I couldn't tell you the number there. But there's 13 cuts in the rest of the film. Um, but we shot the film in a continuous take, so the performers didn't stop. Um, and the reason we had to have cuts was because we were shooting on 16 millimeter. So we had um, uh, 12 choreographed breaks um, where the, the camera operator normally, our cinematographer, um, would be handed a, another camera pre-rolling um, and he would just swap cameras and repeat his motion so we could continue um, with the actors and there was several reasons for that. Um, uh, one of them was uh, working with uh, Maya's experience in theater, um, and I'll let Ellie speak to that, but I'll just talk about the, the more, um, this, the second reason, which was, was more for the audience experience and to really put you in the shoes of the character and in the room with them and feel like you can't, um, you can't look away and you're not getting a, a, a breath because the characters aren't getting that breath. And we, were, we just wanted um, everyone to be included in this experience um, in a way that honored the, the uh, the experience that the film was inspired by. That's the That's the theatrical, like uh, building on, on that experience for the Yeah, day. yeah. Um, it, well, there's this beautiful momentum um, that builds uh, in theater, being able to you know go through the performance from beginning to end, and um, film is so con you know conventionally it's, it's shot completely out of order chronologically, just based on you know location availability, all of those things. And Violet had never acted before. Um, and so we wanted to ensure that she was able to um, feel safe to, to give the most organic performance possible. Um, and so being able to rehearse with her and have her completely off book when we went to camera um, and have the opportunity to, to really workshop every beat of the script was was essential. And so um, we did that continuous action five times, like once a day for five days. Um, and each performance was unique. Um, and it was it was really wonderful to be able to, to experience that, uh, the full narrative each time um, in its own sort of unique way that happened, obviously because of you know, all sorts of different factors. But um, yeah. I'm sorry, it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I also say I'm glad that you pointed out that it, it wasn't showy because that it wasn't our intention to sort of show off with a technical feat. It was more for the emotional reasons that we decided to shoot that way. Yeah, yeah, this is 
the single shot sort of things can be. They were in both. Uh, here was, there was, a, there was a, a rationale to it and everything. I think that's what I was trying to articulate, articulate earlier was that everything, camera, sound, I noticed that your sound design also was 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 sort of stunning from the heartbeat of the, of the baby to when they stepped out into the streets, there was this violence that, that we could, you know, and that, uh, that, was, that was around them versus the intimacy of the home where it was very quiet. Um, anyway, yes? Uh, I, th I think you have already a answered it, but it's all mapped out, though. There wasn't really room for improvising beats or anything. You, get, you guys laid out all the beats, and there, I assume there were some improvised lines, but it pretty much was all scripted. Yeah, we had um, we had five days of rehearsal with the full crew as well. Um, obviously, because one film mag is eleven minutes long, and so we had to make sure that we sort of stuck to our very strict uh, timeline. Uh, we did run out of film one one day, <laughs> so yeah, we did have to stick to the script, and and that was a challenge in and of itself, like trying to um, ensure that. There was some spontaneity and uh, um, sort of this like magic that can build in, in a single performance. Um, we wanted to make sure that we weren't like sticking too much to to this regimented performance that had been rehearsed over and over again. So no thrown in lines or anything. Every time it was all written in. Yeah, there's a handful of, of improv lines that uh, are sort of happy accidents, I, or not accidents, but just. Um, yeah, there's a few things we forget, but um, yeah, when she had to put on her socks, that's improvised. Well, I, I, it's great <laughs> but, it, it, because it feels so real that I, I really, uh, I, yeah, it's great that it's so it's scripted, but it feels like it's improvised. That's the point. Yeah, thank you, and then, yeah, we worked very hard at that. So thank you. <laughs> It, it wasn't so much to, um, uh, thanks for, for um, noticing that, and it, it wasn't um, meant to be kind of like an intentional erasure of men, it was just that the story was about the women we see on screen, and the men were just kind of like, they just happened to be part of the environment, and there was no need to really um, give them much screen time or more than, than, than they have, um, and yeah, it's been kind of interesting to have these conversations with with men who notice kind of the absence of any representation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think also though, despite the absence of men, um, they're still present. Like his, we we really felt like we didn't need to show violence on screen. And we really didn't want to do that. But I think the presence of of the partner, despite him not being on camera, he's sort of his control lingers throughout the film. Um, yeah. The the film uh, the title the body remembers when the world broke open is borrowed from an essay of the same name um, by Billy Ray Belcourt. He's a very talented um, young queer Cree poet and scholar. Um, and uh, you can find the essay online. It was for Arts Everywhere magazine, and it was in response to um, a performance piece by Tanya Lukin Linklater, who's Alaska Native. Um, and the, the essay kind of speaks to the ways in which um, Indigenous people embody this, uh, the trauma of, of colonialism um, and sort of the expectations of artists to somehow um, present a future uh, or a, a current reality wherein everything is reconciled and we're okay. Um, but we're still kind of living through this, this trauma. But that being said, it's also about um, how we're so much more than that, um, than, than simply the trauma. Parts of 
your lived experience, but also um, being free to um, fictionalize parts of it, and how long was that process? Well, for the most part, it's it's all fictionalized. There's still the same kind of core beats. Um, I never saw that young woman again. I dropped her off at home, and I yeah, never saw her again. So we wanted to honor that experience of two strangers sort of colliding um, and and living in this moment um, that's that's so deeply impactful. Um, and we wanted to fictionalize it for a number of reasons, and there's kind of this freedom in being able to fictionalize the characters and, and the story. Um, and we, we wanted to speak to themes of especially the foster care system in Canada. Um, <clears throat> indigenous children are being removed from our communities at uh, alarmingly high rates, and that has such a profound impact on, on the fabric of a community and family. And that's kind of this part of this uh, long le legacy of, of child removal from our communities. Um, and so we wanted to be able to speak to that, especially this issue of, of youth aging out of care. So when they turn 19, they're suddenly just cut off from the system, and um, it's had terrible impacts on, 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 on young people who've been through foster care. A number of youth have died um, at the age of 19 because they're completely cut off from the system. They don't have any support, um, and they're forced to make really... Um, challenging decisions just to survive for young women often turning to sex work or uh, youth ending up homeless and it's it's a really big problem and it's something we wanted to be able to speak to in this film. Yeah and I think in terms of the actual writing process because of the, the format the way we knew we would be shooting in, in real time um, so it was the challenge was in maintaining you know, momentum and drama and, and conflict and, and tension and humor and bringing all of those elements and all of the complexity of the subject matter we were dealing with um, and really fine-tuning the dialogue because we had the bones of, of, of the film based on the real event and so there was a lot of detailed work, I would say. It's a lot of, of going back over and over and over the, the dialogue and making sure each line was, was achieving what we wanted. in a smart car and like a car to go and the car shared it was like our getaway vehicle and it was like pouring rain and went in this little smart car um, and she was so funny like despite what she had just been through she was still making me laugh um, and uh, it was just like such a, a beautiful example of, of like the strength of indigenous people and the, and the beauty of humor and the way that humor um, can transcend trauma in a lot of ways. So we wanted to honor that. And then also to show that she's so much more than a victim. You know, she has agency and she has control and um, she's, smart. she's smart. Yeah, she's she's a survivor. She knows how to how to navigate through this very challenging reality that she faces. <laughs> <laughs>